sedimentary rocks. Here we're going to talk about classification of sedimentary rocks and sediments based upon the size of the individual fragments. So we classify fragments based upon the size. And the largest grain size that we have is what's called gravel. Gravel is a collective term we use to describe all rounded particles that are bigger than about two millimeters. Now obviously that's um, a very large size range, so we can actually break that down into three subcategories. Um, the smallest of those gravel sizes is what we would call pebbles. Pebbles range anywhere from about two millimeters to a little over six and a half um, centimeters in size. Uh, from about six and a half centimeters to about 25 and a half centimeters in size, we would classify as cobbles. And anything bigger than about 25 and a half centimeters is considered a boulder. If you look at smaller grain sizes from that, you have a category what we call sand, and that can be anything from very coarse sand to very fine sand. Obviously, the coarsest, very coarse sand, will be nearing that two millimeter diameter size, whereas very fine sand would be about one sixteenth of a millimeter, or about the thickness of a human hair. Smaller than sand is a category we call silt. Silt's about one two hundred fifty sixth millimeter to about one sixteenth of a millimeter. Essentially, these now are um, very fine grain particles that are too small to see without some sort of magnifying device. Um, Clay is the finest of these sediments, everything less than about 1 256 millimeters. Collectively, we use mud to describe both silt and clay, or a mixture of the two. So here we have, for example, uh, the most coarsest of our grain sizes. There's a man there for scale. These obviously are boulder sizes. These are very large particles. They're larger than that 25 and a half um, centimeter size. Going down, we now have, in this picture, cobbles and pebbles. And you can see the cobbles are a little bit larger, uh, whereas the pebbles are the smaller sizes. All of these collectively are larger than that two millimeter size, um, the cobbles being larger than the pebbles. Here is sand. Sand, you can still see the particles. It's um, uh, about two millimeters um, in diameter or a little bit smaller. This would probably be classified more as a coarse sand because you can actually see kind of the granular nature of the sand in this photograph. Here is a collective uh, photograph of silt and clay particles. Um, again, very difficult to determine the size difference between the two because of uh, it being finer than our ability to see it with the naked eye. Um, you could determine if you walked up here and rubbed some of this, wetted it between your, for your fingers. If it was gritty, it would be silt. If it was smooth, it'd be clay. Now that we've talked about the different grain sizes, let's talk a little bit about the processes that are at work as these grain sizes are being transported either via wind or water, or even in some cases, ice. So two things are happening as sediment is being moved. The first is called rounding, and rounding just is simply the um, grinding away of the sharp or what we would call angular sides of the rock fragment as it's being tumbled or rolled or grinding against other rocks in this transportation process. Essentially, a rock, as it moves further away from the source, as it rolls and grinds down, it becomes much more rounded the further it goes. Sorting is the process by which sediment grains are going to be selected or separated out according to their various grain sizes, depending upon how they're being transported. So for example, water will start to selectively deposit larger grain sizes first and finer grain sizes later on as it's slowing down in terms of current. So a well-sorted sediment would essentially mean all of the sediment grain sizes are of the basic same size. So a well-sorted sand would mean that most of the grain sizes are of sand size. Whereas a poorly sorted sediment would be a hodgepodge of all sorts of different grain sizes from boulders to cobbles to silt to clay. So as I said, this sorting process takes place over a distance as a current such as water starts to slow down and these different sediment size particles start to settle out. So for example, in this picture, you can see we're close to the source, um, a mountain stream, and the grain size here is much larger, boulder size. If you look at this slide, now we've gone a little bit further away from that source. Notice that the grain size has decreased. And also in this picture, the cobbles are much more rounded 
And then here we are even a further distance from the source of our sediment. And we can see now we've moved into more fine grain, more sand sized particles, and much more well sorted sediment. And that ends this mini lecture on grain size.